Welcome to J-Heart Model Works. In this episode, we will be focusing on the Hobby Designs AP Racing Brake Kit and the Ray's TE37 wheels from Fugu Garage. Welcome to my workbench. Let's get started. First thing you need to do when working with resin parts is wash the parts. Mold release is still very common in the resin part field, so I use warm water with a degreasing dish soap like Dawn Dish Liquid. Once the parts are washed and dried, we need to cut them off the sprues and do a little bit of cleanup. So my understanding is resin dust can be hazardous, so you should be using a mask when you're cutting or sanding resin parts. You want to be very careful not to sand off those two little nubs, as those are used for lining up the plastic bits or the resin pieces and the various photo etch parts. Any holes in the parts can get clogged up with the resin during the mold process, so we're going to go ahead and go over these parts real quick and clean them up. Now these two little holes here are just there to line up all the parts that make up the disc. There are a couple of small tabs on the outer hat that go through here, and I'm just going to go ahead and drill these out with a 0.8 millimeter drill bit as that's the closest in size for the holes that are on the part. Next we need to make sure our wheels are going to fit with the brakes. In theory everyone should be using the same sizes as for male fitment. Everyone uses Tamiya's standard size which is typically 2 millimeters. However it's best to make sure things are going to fit right now before you paint and then have to sand and mess with already painted parts. So to begin with we want to take the male fitment post from the Fugu Garage wheels and we want to make sure there's no flash or debris that might inhibit smooth operation. This isn't a sign of bad parts, it's really just the nature of the beast when resin molding parts. As you can see, it kind of mushrooms out at the end, and there's a seam that runs down the center of the post. We just want to go ahead and send this, clean it up, and get rid of all that. So you see we're getting some resistance on this centerpiece for the brakes, so what we're going to do is just take a round metal file, and we're going to file the center out just enough so that we get free movement. We're going to perform the same testing on the center hat for the brakes. Again, we just want to make sure we've got good movement. And we notice there's a little bit of flash on these on the center. So we're going to go ahead and take our sander and we're going to clean that up as well. I thought these center pieces were just leftover molding. I was going to cut them off, but checking reference photos, these do actually belong here. So it's always good to check reference photos before you cut. If you do see some flash in here, just take a hobby knife. With, I would make sure you have a brand new, nice sharp blade and just carefully scrape it out just to clean those out. These are pretty clean though. With this brake kit, you also get two sheets of photo etch, one for the back and one for the front. They are completely identical, so it doesn't matter which one you use where. You get a center and then you get two different venting designs. I'm going to go with the straight slotted as I like them better. But keep the other ones. If you don't like the design, you can just flip them over, but you can use these on future kits. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take our hobby knife and we're going to cut these off of the fret. There's, they're connected by three little tabs. 
So we're just going to cut them and then we're going to file these down with our flat metal file. To make these easy to paint, I've just got an Altoid tin with some double-sided sticky tape. And we're just going to mount these up to this Altoid box. For the wheels, we're going to start with these center caps. Now, you can paint them separately and put them on afterwards. It may even be easier. But I feel I'm going to get a better fit and finish since I'm painting them the same color if I go ahead and put them in now and paint them all together. Now we're going to go ahead and glue these in. So I'm just going to put a little bit of super glue on the center ring. Don't get it where the lug nuts go, just on the center ring. And then very carefully we're going to set these in place with some tweezers. Now I'm going to go ahead and clean these up with my Dremel. If you don't have a Dremel, then I would go ahead and sand the backs smooth of the center caps before you glue them in place or they'll be impossible to reach. So here I'm taking my Dremel in a grinding bit. I'm just going to grind down the back of the center cap. Uh, I'm not trying to thin down the wheel itself. Like I said, I'm just trying to take that back off and get everything flush. I'm going to stick the lug nuts onto some blue tack to make them easier to hold and I want to test the clearance and make sure I don't have any resistance. Once you add primer and paint, these can tighten up a little bit. If you're having resistance now, you will have problems after they're painted. To open these lug nut holes up a little bit, I'm going to use my round metal file and using very little pressure, just twist and widen them a little bit at a time until I have no resistance when I test fit the lug nuts. It could take two or three passes to get this nice and clear. All right, due to some fitment issues that I will discuss in detail during the assembly stage, I'm not going to be prepping the lug nuts correctly, so I want to take a minute to discuss how to prep these the right way. Uh, the lug nuts come separate from the wheels. This makes them easy to paint a separate color. On the back, there is a raised circle area. You want to sand off the flash, but do not remove this raised circle. You're supposed to take the male or female fitment pieces and glue them to the back of the lug nuts and that circle helps make sure everything is centered properly and lines up right. Due to my issues, I am going to be sanding them flat and I'm going to sand them as thin as possible to reduce how far they cause the wheels to stick out. So I'm going to use what I lovingly refer to as my chainsaw which is a 120 grit UMP thinny stick sander and I'm gonna make quick work of the excess then follow up with a 400 grit to smooth off the back surface. All the resin parts are going to get two coats of black Stunnel Res Primer sprayed at 25 PSI through my UMP Apex airbrush with the 0.35 millimeter needle. A lacquer primer would etch into the resin and grip better, but I don't have any black lacquer primer right now, and using a black primer lets me skip straight to metallic paint without spraying a black base coat first. Having a black base really makes metallics pop better.
Now the camera wasn't recording when I did the first coat of black on these lug nuts, so here's the second coat going down real quick. We're going to hit the metal rings with some Tamiya LP3 flat black. Do not primer these parts first. Primer will stick to the parts and for the rings it's going to cause us some issues later. The center hats are going to get a couple of coats of Mr. Hobby Super Metallic 2 Super Gold. I'm really loving these Mr. Hobby Super Metallics. They're gorgeous paints. The center parts got sprayed with some Vallejo Model Air Silver. As an airbrush paint, I am severely unimpressed with this. It's very grainy, the finish is bad. I ended up respraying them with some LP48 Sparkling Silver. It's really not that big of a deal as you're really only going to see the spines on the, set, on the outside edge. And it's really just while you're assembling it, you'll never see the parts again. Calipers got some LP7 Pure Red from Tamiya. These were the hardest parts to paint. Uh, red is already a translucent color. It took about three coats to get a good solid coverage. Had I sprayed a silver base, these probably would have popped better and they would have gotten coverage quicker. I just didn't think to do it at the time. We're going to hit the lug nuts with a quick coat of LP48 Sparkling Silver. So my original plan for the wheels was to spray them with MRP Bronze. That paint was terrible. Uh, I don't know what happened, but the paint was really rough, the particles were huge, and the color just wasn't right. Since these are raised TE37s and Zero makes a raised TE37 bronze paint, I bought some. This isn't bronze to me. This is closer to a pale gold. Now, Alclad doesn't make a bronze, but they do make a copper, and I have some, so I thought let's give it a shot, and in my opinion, it's a beautiful color on these wheels. Where I do like this Vallejo Silver is for detail painting. It seems to go down much nicer with a brush than with an airbrush, and if you make a mistake, you can easily clean it up with some water. I am again using my 0.3 millimeter mechanical pencil. 0.7 and 0.5 are real cheap and real easy to find. The 0.3 is more expensive as it's intended for mechanical drafting, but they make amazing detail brushes. Just dip your pencil into the paint, and then you can very carefully just pick out the details you want to hit with extreme accuracy. Okay, this next step is a little sketchy and involves power tools. I'm not responsible if you follow this and you injure yourself. I'm not responsible if you damage anything. I'm not responsible for anything that might consider happening while you are using power tools. Please use extreme care while using power tools. Okay, so I'm using a grinding wheel. Do not use a cutting wheel. A grinding wheel is thick and it won't cut you if you hit it with your finger. And I put a couple of pieces of double-sided sticky tape on the top side of the wheel. So just like we did on the Altoid box to paint them, we're going to go ahead and hold the part with the double-sided tape on the wheel. Now you want to make sure you get this perfectly centered. 
if you get it off then your grooving is going to be lopsided and it's going to look bad so get it as centered as you possibly can so i'm using a brand new 120 grit ump thinny stick sander but you can use something like 400 grit sandpaper as well we want to just touch the sander to the surface of the disc do not put pressure down or you might remove the paint from the venting we just want it to sand off the flat of the disc itself Okay, so we're going to take a 2 millimeter piece of plastic rod and a couple of pieces of 0.75 millimeter plastic rod and we're going to put them into a piece of styrofoam just to make a small jig to help us line everything up. So we're going to take our center piece, we're going to flip it upside down and we're going to put this over that 2 millimeter post and then we're going to take the 0.75 millimeter posts and put them in to hold it steady in place. Once those are in place, we're going to take some super glue and put it on the centerpiece and then we're going to take one of the solid metal discs and we're going to slide it over the three posts get everything lined up and press it into place once that side's set flip it over and repeat with the other mostly solid metal disc Now we're going to set our center hats. There's one for each disc and they go on the outside. So let's put some super glue on the inside of the hat and then line those two small tabs up with the small holes in the front of the disc and press it in place. Now we're going to glue our grooved rings onto the front of and back of the disc, just apply some super glue evenly around the disc area and then set your ring in place. Repeat for the back side and the discs are done. Now we're going to pick a spot on the disc and just put some super glue down, then push our caliper home. As this is a full brake set, there are none of the mounting points to line up from the kit discs. So it doesn't matter where we put them. I check to see if there's a flawed area on the disc. And if so, I just use the caliper to cover it up. And the last step before we can mount these is to go ahead and add our decal. I'm going to use the white ones. Uh, just go ahead and dip them in the water for about 10 seconds, apply some micro set to your part, fill around with them, get them lined up perfectly in place, then use a cotton bud to remove the excess water, knock it out of place, fill around with the cotton bud, try and get it back into place, eventually get it somewhat close to where you want it, and then just leave it be to dry. To mount these brakes onto the chassis, we want to slide our poly cap over a piece of plastic rod. We're then going to apply some glue to the chassis where the original kit part would go. Make sure not to get any on the inside. To set our poly cap in place and then slide the brake assembly over the rod and press it home. If you didn't get anything on the rod itself, you should be able to remove it once the glue is dried.
Moving on to the wheel assembly, we're going to start by gluing the lug nuts into the wheels. I'm just going to apply some super glue to both the lug nut and to the back side of the wheel. Then I'm going to use some blue tack to hold the lug nuts and make it easier to just press them home. Next we're going to mount the tires. These Fugu tires are branded on one side and not the other, so we need to make sure the correct side is facing out. Then we're just going to slide them in place. They are a snug fit, so I'm not even going to bother with glue. So looking at the original kit wheel, the design curves out towards the center. This causes the wheel to sit further inside the wheel well and it be flush with the body. Now if you look at the TE37 wheel, the center curves in. This pushes the outer edge of the wheel further out and the wheel and tires sit outside the body. To mitigate this as much as I can, I've sanded the lug nut piece down very thin and I'm not going to use the mounting stud as the top of that which glues to the lug nuts will add another 2 millimeters to how far this kicks out. Instead, I'm going to glue the wheels directly on the brake hats, but before I do, I'm going to glue in a piece of 2 millimeter plastic rod, and that's going to give me more surface area for a more secure connection. My kits aren't going to competitions, they're just going to sit in my cabinet and look good, so turning wheels aren't a big deal breaker for me. Now, I may have been able to mess with this and drill out the lug nuts and glue in some rod in place and try to make them work, but it's a lot of effort for something that personally I feel is unnecessary. Sorry, the last part is a bit out of frame, but after gluing the small piece of plastic rod in place, I shaved it down flat with a hobby knife and gave it a quick sanding to flatten everything out, make sure it's really smooth. And now everything's ready to glue the wheel in place. And this is what it will look like once the wheels are in place. The brakes look great. I think that the copper is a great combination with the blue and purple paint. Uh, I won't glue them in place in this video though, as I typically don't put wheels on until final assembly. This gives me more room in case there's any issues mating the, ch the body to the chassis and I have to wiggle things around. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. Also feel free to leave comments, feedback, critique, or anything else in the comment section below. I enjoy interacting with all my viewers in the comment section and try to reply to all the comments I receive. If you want to catch future videos, please consider subscribing to my channel and make sure you click the bell notification icon so you can be notified when I upload new videos. As always, thank you for watching, keep modeling, and have a great day.